Hello, and welcome to Circularity 20. My name is Lauren Phipps. I'm the Director and Senior Analyst on Circular Economy at Greenbiz Group, and I will be your host on the main stage for the next three days. Currently, I am joining you live from the empty Greenbiz office in beautiful Oakland, California. And I would love to invite all of you to introduce yourselves and where you're tuning in from in the main stage chat. It has been quite the process of pivoting and shifting gears to arrive here today. And it's a slightly different approach to convenings than I think we're all kind of used to. And I am thrilled that we are all finally here together from afar. Before we dive into a very packed program, I'm gonna take just a few minutes to orient us both theoretically and tactically within the event. Right now, everything feels like an understatement. We are in a moment when genuine sentiment has become a cliched adage. Thanks to the latest unprecedented event of this week, my voice is hoarse from breathing in smoke-filled air from a crushing fire season in full swing in California. There's so much to acknowledge. Climate change, global pandemic, a recession, an uprising and overdue national reckoning around race, not to mention a legacy of injustice, grief, pain, disconnection, and in the context of the circular economy, we are tasked with designing a bold vision of the future while it feels like the foundation below us is crumbling. And yet, I have never been so sure that the world could actually look like the one we're working towards, a circular economy. One that decouples production from extraction. One that uses what we have better and for longer. An economic system that works for everyone and not just a fortunate few a world that regenerates both the environment and communities and a system that optimizes for delight and connection and designs out some of the dysfunction. I am sure of this possibility right now because this is the punctuation. Maybe not a small comma or an ellipsis, but this is a page break. This moment is creating space for an alternative while the design constraints that have felt so immovable don't feel so static. It's our opening. We can viscerally feel that this isn't working. This has not been working. This meaning our current linear system of production, consumption, and disposal, and the metrics that have justified business as usual. And we are here at Circularity 20 because we know that we can do better. We deserve better. And we gather to imagine what better actually looks like in practice, to align ourselves so that we can get there fast enough. We are not here to actually pat ourselves on the back and say, we did it. We're not here to say that we've achieved the circular economy because we haven't, look around. Certainly we are here to take stock of what is working, to celebrate some successes and to share best practices so that others don't have to start from scratch. But we're also here to be real about what's broken. We are here to hold each other accountable for commitments that we may or may not have been making progress on or maybe we haven't even made yet. And we're here to help because this is complex stuff that we're working on. Systems change is not easy but we have each other to figure it out. We need each other to figure it out. We come together as a community at these events to co-create, to connect and to reconnect. And we're here as a reminder that even if you are just the only person at your organization tuning in right now, you're the only person that's even heard of the word circularity. You have a network of potential collaborators that are thousands strong tuning in right now. I am so grateful for us to be here right now and for what the next three days will hold. It has felt like a long time coming getting to this point. And there is so much passion in this awesome community of thinkers and doers that really have each other's back. People that think holistically and that wanna create, not just talk about this stuff. And this community is what's kept me encouraged and engaged in the past few months when things have felt really hard. So who is this wonderful community that I speak so highly of? Um, we have over 10,000 registrants representing 108 different countries. Um, they are small and big startups all the way to Fortune 500s. Um, and I'm not sure if my slide is changing. Looks like I, don't, I can't change it. There we go. Um, this is who's participating. 108 countries represented, big and small, 29% with annual revenues greater than a billion dollars. And it is public sector and private sector. Um, there we go. 
Uh, 74% from the private sector, 12% NGOs, 10% academia and training, and 5% from the public sector. And as you will see in the diverse lineup of speakers, they come from different industries and roles, B2B and B2C. Now, circularity is place-based and it takes a community of people to do it, to actually implement. And I want to say a huge thank you to Atlanta, um, to the wonderful host committee that has that welcomed us in the lead up to the event. And while we wish we could be there in person, um, we hope to come back in 2022. Um, I also want to thank our amazing event partners that have been so generous in getting us to this point. I wish you could see all of the heart behind each of these logos. The individuals of these organizations embody the humility and generosity need, needed to work together in this time. Thank you. And I especially want to thank the Alan MacArthur Foundation for being such an awesome partner in this event. I want to thank as well our amazing sponsors. Um, they have recognized the value of investing in convening right now and the imperative of coming together. So thank you for making this event possible. Now, I do want to acknowledge that uh, we are competing with a lot on your end, email, children, the rest of your day. And I hope you will stick with, with us as much as possible this week. And we have jammed as much into these three days as possible. You'll hear from over 150 different speakers, with 80 different sessions. And we have designed for the Zoom fatigue brains that we all have with rapid 25 minute breakouts. Today and tomorrow as well, there's gonna be discussion-based breakout round tables, round table discussions. They're 1230 Pacific. And they're a really great way to connect with folks um, that, and have conversations to go deeper into some of these subjects. The program is intended to be practical and tactical, solutions oriented, and I don't just want you to walk away with new ideas, but I want you to walk away with some skills to actually implement them and some people to help you succeed. Now, if you are someone that does travel to conferences under less dramatic circumstances, I want you to think for a moment about who is that one person that you always look forward to seeing at events. Maybe it's someone that you're hoping to meet with this week in person. Likely it's someone that you don't work with very closely, but when you're at a busy conference and you walk eyes across the room, that's the person that you're, go, you're excited to go chat with and, and catch up with. If someone comes to mind, I invite and encourage you to reach out to them, take advantage of our networking breaks and schedule a virtual coffee, catch up. This is a real event. <laughs> Though we might be afar, I think there's no time like the present to reconnect and to remember that we've got each other's back. As well, there is a video networking section of the site. Just go to networking and you will be randomly paired with someone else at the conference for a quick chat, just like you would if you were in line waiting for a coffee and you're talking to your neighbor. Now, before we dive into the first session, I wanna offer one more suggestion. It is so easy to listen for what we expect and what we already know. But the program is filled with a diversity of perspectives and experiences, some familiar faces and some people that I bet you've never met before. I invite you to listen for what's new, especially listening for the nuance before applying a value judgment. Because though there is such urgency right now, it is our responsibility to acknowledge our blind spots and to listen to the people that might be able to help fill them. And if you really listen this week, I promise it will be worthwhile. Well. I am so excited for the first panel, and I cannot think of a better way to kick things off at Circularity 20. Please join me in welcoming for a conversation about circularity in this moment, Joel McCower, Chairman and Executive Editor of GreenBiz Group, and a person who I don't really think needs an introduction in this context, Dame Ellen MacArthur. Take it away, Joel. <laughs> 